we're moving towards a world where it's going to be BMW Mini, JLR, and Nissan, which makes up the vast majority of production. And the good thing about those models are they're not too linked into the Eurozone. So BMW and JLR export all around the world from their plants. Um, Nissan is linked but, uh, to the Eurozone, but actually produces models that, have tr um, that are very popular and current, these crossover segment uh, models like the Qashqai. It remains to be seen what the impact of the AAA, loss of the AAA rating is. Um, the risks are that the uh, interest costs rise and the cost of this investment um, has gone up in terms of the, uh, uh, the company's ability to fund it. So there is some risk that companies will be able to access that money. The only positive thing I can say is JLR is seeing huge growths in profitability. Its profit run rate is about $1.3 billion, which should be enough to self-fund a lot of that investment. Mini in particular and JLR uh, sell globally to high growth markets and JLR in particular has found a product in the Range Rover which is uniquely um, tailored to the Chinese market as it turns out. Um, and so that is a huge advantage as the Eurozone is going to be suffering over the next few years, possibly as long as a, as a decade, it means our car industry will be less impacted by that than our European counterparts. The local content is increasing. There's a number of factors driving that. The, we hear in the news recently about the, the yen weakening, but actually it's very strong compared to the last 20 to 30 years. That's driving the Japanese car manufacturers who make half the cars made here in the UK today to localise their supply chains more. And actually it makes sense anyway for car companies to um, s source many of their bulky components and hard to ship components locally. So we're seeing an increase in local content and the manufacturers who are going to grow and do well are those who also have high local content. So actually, the, the real challenge for the UK is to try and maximise that supply chain opportunity that is being presented by the car makers in this country. Today, there is £3 billion worth of supply that the car companies in the UK would like to place with suppliers in the UK but are struggling to do so because maybe the capacity isn't there today. It's actually spread across quite a wide range of products as well. And this three billion number comes from a unique collaboration by car companies in the UK who fed in their information and data on what they were looking to source in the coming years uh, into uh, the government. And it was Biz who pulled all these figures together and came, came up with this three billion number. I've actually ha had the opportunity to go through it all and uh, sort of audit it. And, uh, you know, it is a robust number. I was very heartened to see that engineering graduates, um, uh, when they go into employment post-graduation, they earn 10% more now than the average graduate who leaves a UK university. That's a real turnaround from wh where things used to be. And so I think that's a real kind of uh, attraction for engineering graduates to stay and find a vocation in, within engineering, but also for others in, in maybe sciences to also consider a future in, uh, in engineering uh, vocationally.